What you got there? Stair treads. Stair treads, all sliced up. Yep. Just in time for our statewide shutdown. Yeah. Nothing to do but build stairs now. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah. And then you can see on top the rounds there, those are the spacers between the treads. So all the treads we got now, ready to go. Well, hey folks, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living. Wanted to give you guys an update, our weekend update for our progress on the stairs. So behind me is a nice selection of the stair treads that Brian's finishing. And what, we're, what he's really been focused on is really getting everything nice and smooth, prepped and ready for the stain in the polyurethane. So fortunately, I think I told you guys in the last video, we were able to get our, uh, treads all milled in half so we've got double the treads now the lumber mill was able to accommodate us on short notice and they finished the job within 24 hours so the rest that brian has to do is sort of do a little bit of extra trim around some of the areas and then the finished work so all the ones that are up here are all finished and ready to go with stain and polyurethane so one thing that still has to happen though on these top ones is that i'll show you so right here in the circle, the top of this uh, circle where he sort of pins together the template, this area needs um, a cutout. So we need a drill press to go in there. Uh, I had suggested maybe trying out the router uh, to see if that would work, but Brian says it doesn't go all the way through because it's a little bit more than, it's, it's uh, three inches. And anyway, he thinks it just, it'll go a lot faster with um, a drill press. So we're going to see if we can borrow one from somebody. But... Let me show you the pieces that go together. So right here we have um, the steel pipe that we're going to be using for stacking these all together and, and uh, lining them all up. So I was imagining like a four or six inch pipe, but Brian's actually doing it with this one and a half inch pipe. So it's going to um, go through the center of the, um, the circled area there and then um, each stair tread is going to lie on top of each other. So there's going to be touching overlap for the entire stair tread. So there is that support. It's not just on this like fulcrum piece um, on the very end of the stair. And um, uh, we have some other pieces about how that I want Brian to explain that how it's going to get secured to the floor. Now there is an update on the spacers. So down here are... We had had the um, lumber mill mill up the tree that Brian pulled out of the woods a couple weekends ago into four inch spacers. And unfortunately, Brian is not happy with the condition of the wood. He thinks it's too dry, cracked, and doesn't feel very secure about using them for weight bearing. So he has asked the lumber mill for suggestions on what he could use for spacers. Um, and he is still waiting for the lumber mill to get back with him uh, for an answer on that. Uh, <clears throat> so you can say it's a little bit of a holdup, but not really. We have plenty of, <laughs> plenty of steps to do uh, as far as finishing these stairs. So the steps are in a few stages here. So let me show you the, these are sort of the finished ones ready for stain up here. The, and Brian is actually working outside right now on this step. Uh, these are a few right here with the, um, all the rough cutting is complete, but they just need to be sanded. Now look at all this pine pitch that's coming out. Um, this is a chronic problem. This is what is slowing Brian's sanding down because it gums up his, um, it, his uh, sandpaper on the sander there. So he only gets through a certain amount before he has to change the paper. I think it's about three or four. And he had to make a run to the store today in order to, to get more. So unfortunately, de still dealing with a lot of pine sap. Um, and over here, over here are the treads that still need all of their rough cutting done. So um, I think he was trying to get the first floor done first. He wants to get, you know, try to get a good section done before he works on all of these. These would be maybe going to the loft. Um, so I don't think he's going to complete these right away, but you can see, you know, he's, 
got to trim all those edges. Uh, you can see where the router edge is, and he's got to trim it all off and make them all smooth. Look how rough this one is. So there's still a lot of work to be done on these, but his main goal was to get these done first and then uh, get the sanding and the polyurethane step done. Uh, so we're finding that some of the stairs, uh, the way that the cracking is, uh, is a little bit... Because this is the part you're going to be stepping on right here. Right. So I think something, maybe a couple across might strengthen. A bow tie? One of them seemed to, I felt like it went pretty far through. That was probably the worst one that mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, this one is, I guess because there's a little bit of a crack down here, too. Yeah, so if I put, like, two in there, mm -hmm. I strengthen it up. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I was trying to explain your idea for how to secure it to the floor. Oh. I'm actually going to weld this on, put some tack welds on there, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to get a bit a bigger plate to weld this to, mm -hmm. and then uh, it'll be like that. Mm -hmm. So the bigger plate won't be much bigger, it'll only be maybe six inches uh -huh. in diameter, not, maybe not even, mm -hmm. and then that'll give it some rigidity, mm -hmm. and then that's the starting point like that, of course it goes right there. But and then I'll just slide each um, piece over the top. Mm -hmm. And I did it in uh, sections like this so it's easier. So I don't have to go 12, 20 feet up and come all the way down. Oh, okay. So you'd be able to screw on the other one down there? Yeah, exactly. So I got a little collar coupling. Now to build a, drill a bigger hole where I do, where I had the coupling, but. Mm -hmm. um, well, sorry. It's a little bit bigger, maybe a two inch hole. Mm -hmm. Then that will go on there. And then I can screw the next one on. Mm -hmm. So. That way I don't have to drill a bigger hole to go all the way down. I can just drill, once I get to that part, then I can drill mm -hmm. a bigger hole. And then uh, you had an idea to secure it to the stair well? Or the yeah, so let me... So that's the... This is the box opening in the floor. The uh, pole come here, through there. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so once we get the stairs all the way up, then we'll need a platform, so. Yeah, you're landing. Uh, you're right, so. Um, there'll be the, this corner's got a piece of angle iron out of here. Mm -hmm. So the, I don't know where exactly it's gonna land. Either it's somewhere in the box, you know, within seven inches of the box. The, the box might be the last step but my plan is that I'll put some angle iron in here, like that, mm -hmm. and then the last uh, piece of stair, last stair tread will be a a big thick piece, and there'll be angle iron through here as well mm -hmm. to support it, like that. Okay. So it'll be a, you know, you walk onto the landing and then you start going down the stairs. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. So basically it's just some angle iron bolted here 
on the edges mm -hmm. to support the edge of a plank. So it would hold it, yeah. So it'll still be mounted in the middle, mm -hmm. like the, all the stairs, but it'll just be like a big stair. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to get uh, a big piece of wood. Mm -hmm. And then how does it get bolted to the floor? There's a, you drill a hole into the concrete. Because uh -huh. underneath where the stair case is, is a 12 inch thick piece of concrete. Mm -hmm. So it's actually 16 inches thick right there because the floor plus 12 inches of concrete underneath. And there's a two by foot, two foot pad under there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it'll get bolted into that. Oh, okay. So I'll just uh, drill a hole all the way down. And the radiant heat goes around that two foot square pad. Right. So, um, unfortunately, when we put the drywall up, I had written the measurements of center and <laughs> oh. on the styrofoam. But um, what I'll do is I'll just I'm gonna go from corner to corner. That'll find my center, mm -hmm. and then I'll drop a plumb line straight down, mm -hmm. and then I'll get my center. So. Mm -hmm. And what I'm, what I'm also going to do, so just this is top-down view of the square box. That might have been easier to draw. I'm going to put uh, on the underside. I'm going to put a board across like that, mm -hmm. with a hole right in dead center mm -hmm. for my pipe to go up through. Mm -hmm. And that way, the board will hold the staircase centered while I'm putting it, while I'm building it together. Yeah. So, like I can. I'll have the coupling in together, like right. I'll put a stair um, spacer and then a staircase or a stair tread over it, then I can put it back up through the hole, screw it back on to hold it centered. Okay. So it always stays lined up as we're oh, going okay. up. Oh, okay. So. Here's your daily workout. Yeah. Cool. I've been working on the wood burning of the uh, um, the header for the door. So this is very time intensive. <laughs> it doesn't seem super complicated to do wood burning, but um, with the amount of detail and find a motor skill and uh the shading it's actually pretty complex it's upside down right now but um it's coming out nice i just have to take breaks because this wood burning tool heats up pretty hot and after a while um just even holding on to the rubber part is uh gets really really hot so i had to let that cool off take breaks plus your hand cramps up because you can't hold on to it down here you have to hold on to it back here and it just is not very ergonomic for many hours at a time so that's where we're at um and other news we've had a little resurgence of some winter weather we've had a little bit of snow uh the sun comes out melts the snow and then the next day we get a couple more inches so we're kind of in that snow melt cycle which is pretty much um end of march through April, you tend to get a lot of snow and then melting and then sun and then softening. So it's it's one of those aggravating seasons. I'm kind of glad that I'm not driving around a lot right now. So I'm not uh, contributing to the driveway mess, uh, not having my car completely muddy every single minute, even though it is muddy right now. 
Um, just enjoying a lot of home projects as far as trying to get creative with home workouts and uh, cooking some different things for variety, working on hobby stuff, you know, just trying to stay busy, being in the house more. Uh, I've been taking Vigo out on long walks. You saw that if you caught that live video or the replay of it, took Vigo out up on the hill there. So doing longer snowshoes in the woods, uh, being outside more in the morning time, but still work, having work to do, fortunately still employed and have plenty of work to do during the day. So you know, it's uh, for us, uh, um, stay at home orders isn't really that big of a deal. Something that is interesting you might find is that uh, being up in the mountains, we're, we're seeing a surge of people from the front range in the city metro areas coming up to try to come hiking uh, in the mountains. And the sheriff is actually turning people away at the trailheads. They don't want to have um, mixing of regions. They're trying to contain people to their uh, to their most immediate region. So they really don't want anybody coming up here from the city, um, trying to really minimize uh, spreading of germs. So it's interesting because it is a thing. Hundreds of people are coming up here uh, to, sh to shop. We have to show our ID in town, uh, our local cooperative, because people are um, coming in from out of town and they're turning them away. We don't uh, we're not. We're trying to discourage people um, coming up into the mountains for any reason, unless you already live here. So that's one of the things that we're running into in the mountains amidst, amidst, um, amidst all of this uh, virus uh, pandemic kind of thing. So, but otherwise, it's pretty much business as normal, at least for me, um, and pretty much for Brian. Except that, uh, like I've said before in previous videos, a lot of his appointments. Uh, with his patients are over the phone now. So a lot of things are getting canceled, non-essential activities are getting canceled, screenings and things like that. Uh, he's just able to talk to folks over the phone. But he's still going to work every day. I'm still working every day. Uh, and we're still working on the house every day. So not a whole lot's changing. Just um, Brian's the one that's picking up most of the groceries these days. So saving money on gas and uh, trying to keep spirits up uh, doing fun things around the house. So that's sort of the update here, but.